Hey there, everyone. Dave Keller here at StockCharts.com, and welcome to this special edition of The Final Bar. Today, we're going to be talking about top 10 charts to watch for November 2023. We've done this sort of special episode every month for the last couple of months. It's been a lot of fun because it's forced me and sometimes a guest like Grace and Rose to think about which stocks actually use the Stock Charts platform and come up with some actionable ideas that we think demonstrate why technical analysis can be a core part of your investment process. With that in mind, Grayson, thanks for joining me today. Good to, good to have you back here on the special. Always. This is a fun one to do. So, you know, we're doing this, we're actually recording this on Fed Day, right? We're in the beginning we of November. October has been kind of a question mark month among question mark months since uh, August, yes. September, October. Yes, yes. When you're looking at the market here, what is your sense when you're trying to pick stocks? Challenging environment, easy environment, and why? Challenging environment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I will say I've got some tight stops right now. I've been, yeah. been tightening things up. I've been, you know, holding a lot of cash. And um, it's a challenging environment right now. Yeah. What's been funny is, you know, the stuff that, uh, that has been working has continued to work, some of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and in a, in a funny way, you know, when we're doing an exercise like this, picking stocks, it's almost easier to do in an environment like this, right? Because the stuff that is working really, you know, makes itself clear. It's, it's yeah. a small list of things. You're running those scans. You're only getting a couple of names back that are making new highs and, and continuing to move higher. So it's funny how it's, it's easier to find stocks that are working in a challenging environment like this. Yeah. Uh, but it has been a, it's been a tricky environment. You know, so mm. much volatility, a lot of names, you know, that have been making a breakout and then it quickly fails and they're getting absolutely slammed. Yeah. So it's a, it's a tough environment to trade right now. Mm. It definitely is. It's, it's interesting. You and I have a similar approach, I think, in terms of scans that we run regularly, a, yep. a, a process that we follow every day, every week, whatever Same it is. Same thing consistently. Same thing. Yep. And it's funny because I feel like in 2021, maybe earlier in 2021, 23, scanning for new swing highs, which is something I do regularly. Yeah. Lots of ideas, right? Tons. Hundreds of stocks coming yeah. up. Overwhelming. And it's like yeah. Over an overwhelming number. Yeah. Now it's a little more, it's a smaller, but I feel like more meaningful group. And it, it, it reminds me that running those scans consistently, it's not just about the names that come up. It's also about the types of names, the sectors that are represented. Yeah. It's how many names are on there. And just as my new highs list has gotten smaller and smaller, I'm finding some actionable ideas that I'm thinking, Right. These are good at any point, but especially now when the average stock is getting is getting crushed. Right. That's why relative strength, I feel like, is so important Absolutely. in this environment, right? And you and I have talked about this before. You know, if you're running those scans for new highs over the same time frame every week for months and months and years and years, yeah. it becomes this incredible little sort of personal breadth metric mm, because yeah. you get to watch those numbers go up and you get to watch those numbers come down. Yeah. You also get to see sort of the internals of the market saying, you know, which sectors and which industries are actually uh, producing those new highs. When energy starts to take off, that's really dominating your scans. Yeah. So it's actually a fantastic way to watch the market, scanning from the bottom up. Yeah. It's, uh, it's something that I, I really you know, tell a lot of people about. You and I have talked about it a lot. Uh, it's true. Past. It's true. So today we're talking about the top 10 charts to watch. I think yes. we have 10 stock ideas that we're going to kind of go through one by one. Do you want to yeah. kick us off with the first one? Let's do it. So I'm actually going to throw something out there for everybody. I am using our new Sharp Charts Workbench, awesome. which is uh, still in development. It's still a beta. It's still something that we're working on, but we're putting it out there for everyone to go play around with and test and explore. And most importantly, you know, let us know what's, uh, what's working, what's not working. We're actively making this thing better, so we want everyone's feedback. So uh, one of the ways that you can get there is from the members dashboard. There's a link right up here if you've got, uh, got my screen up. Uh, and then the other way is actually on the existing Sharp Charts workbench, right below your charts, there's a little message with a link to that new workbench. So uh, I'm finding this thing to work incredibly well, though. A uh, little plug here for, uh, for the new workbench. So this is it. I've got my five stocks loaded up into a chart list, which you, you can actually kind of navigate uh, right up here above the chart. So my first pick is going to be AGYS, Agilsys. Now, technology has been a, uh, a challenging group in the last two years, obviously one that was hit incredibly hard, but then has rallied back incredibly hard. Yeah. I like to look for leaders in a space like that. So this is a, a clear leader there, you know, testing new highs, uh, really, really trying to make this breakout. Uh, I like what I'm seeing here too on a relative basis, this, uh, this name absolutely outperforming uh, VTI, which is the Vanguard Total Index, uh, has been flying higher quite aggressively. So I am not looking at this as, a, as an instant entry. I'm thinking this, yeah. is, this is one that you definitely watch. You see how it can handle this breakout. Because as I said, there have been a lot of stocks that have been trying to make those breakouts 
And if they fail, they really fail hard. Mm. Uh, so that is something I'm watching. But I like this broader sort of consolidation uh, within a broader uptrend. Uh, I like that we're, uh, we're moving up to new highs. We're clearing you know, some key moving averages. Uh, there's a lot to like here on this. When you see you know, a market that's, uh, that's been challenging like this, a market that's been selling off really hard, and then you see a name that has been doing the exact opposite, that tells you something, right? That tells you that there's serious demand for this stock. In weak times, you're still seeing buyers come in. That's yeah. the type of thing I like to see. That's the type of thing that's going to end up on my radar. So uh, my first pick, Agilesys. It's an interesting chart, and, I, and we've talked a lot on the final bar recently about gaps because there have been names where you yep. kind of gap higher, and then I always think what happens after that is really important, right? Do you right. see additional buyers coming right. in? Is AGYS is one or? of those where you're seeing that. You're seeing yeah. the gap higher. It's revalued a lot higher, but then all of a sudden people are buying more and right. more, right? right? There's demand that's continuing, which is... And it's awesome. right up against these levels. So, I mean, this is yeah, really kind of the key right? time yeah. for, for AGYS. It's really got to prove itself here. Uh, you know, probably needs a little bit more uh, more time to kind of shake things out up here, uh, you know, around new highs. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot to like if it can uh, can get above here, especially if the market starts to catch a bid. Yeah. We do continue to move higher, you know, recover a little Names bit like going this. into the could, fall. Could work. Yeah. Could be one to watch. Strong pick to start us off. Thanks for going with technology here. Of I'm going to go with my first pick, uh, consumer discretionary. And okay. We're going to go with a retail name. This is a name that we've actually featured on this uh, episode, this special episode yes. last month in October. We talked about this, uh, this name. This is one of my 10, and I repeat it as a, as a second one. I think what's interesting about Murphy USA, ticker MUSA, we highlighted this as a cup and handle pattern. Mm -hmm. And shout out to the guys at uh, Investing with IBD. It was on their uh, podcast, and Justin and Arusha asked me for, uh, for some names I was watching. This was one that I threw out because I think it – captures that classic William O'Neill pattern, which is you have a run up higher, you make a new high, and then you have this big rounded bottoming pattern that takes months and months to complete. Then you have this shallower pullback uh, there, July, August, September, we finally break out. And that breakout above the rim of the cup is really the meaningful move. That's the trigger, right? Which, you know, we have the setup and then we have that trigger, which tells you something's happening. And then for me, it's that, that next step um, uh, the follow through and yeah. what happens after that. And if you look, what's really impressive to this, uh, for this, you continue to make higher highs and, and higher lows. And I think, you know, going back to your first pick, I think one of the consistent patterns probably in a lot of the charts we're going to feature is improving relative strength. And right. so this is a name like this that is doing well, that is actually appreciating in absolute terms when the average stock is having a really challenging 2023, I think is, is pretty meaningful. Yeah. Um, from top to bottom, it's making higher highs and higher lows. It's above two upward sloping moving averages. The RSI is constructive. And, and what I mean by that is the whole range of it is kind of higher, right? We're becoming overbought when we rally, when we pull back, the RSI is holding above 40. And so it's kind of in that classic bullish bullish range, the relative strength, right? It's improving, meaning it's outperforming the S&P. So, you know, I think the broad market as a whole, I would think of as guilty until proven innocent. Sure. I think there's, you know, that medium term time frame is still kind of challenging. But names like this, I think you have to assume innocent until proven guilty, right? A yeah. trend that is in place, I'm going to assume that it's going to keep working right. until the chart tells me otherwise. I think MUSA for now kind of still working. Yeah. Absolutely. No, this is one of those names that has, has been flying higher even through the weak market that we've been seeing in the last two months, Yeah, which yeah. tells you a lot. I mean, I love what you're seeing on this. Look yeah. at that hold of the 50-day. Yep. Just steady as A number of pullbacks. And I'm, I'm guessing, just kind of visually eyeballing this, I mean, if you threw a 20-day moving average on there, it's basically pulled back to the 20-day yep. and held the RSI above 50. Yeah. There's a lot to like here. It's pretty good. It's good so chart. charts like this, I, I'm, I'm happy owning a portfolio of charts like that in any environment, but yeah. especially in this environment when, when the average stock does not look like MUS. You always say it's always a good time to own It's always charts. a good time to own good charts, right? Why I not? I like it. I like it. All right, your second pick, Grayson. Where are we going next? My second pick, it's also in the technology space. This is going to be Arista Networks. Now, okay. this thing, another one that has gapped higher. A lot of people talking about this, but again, kind of on that theme of something that is just working. You know, you don't want to fight what's, uh, what's working. So here's a, a name that has been moving higher broadly, has been a little bit choppy. This is a, a bit more of a kind of volatile play. Uh, but broadly speaking, you know, we're in an uptrend. We can see that that 200-day uh, that moving average, that 50-day moving average, and that orange line actually is a 100-day moving average. Mm. Uh, all of those are moving higher. We're now sitting above all of those moving averages. Again, outperforming the market. So here's that relative strength line. You can see ANET outperforming VTI, outperforming the total market. And we're now trading up at, uh, at all-time highs after earnings. 
Uh, by the way, one of the things that we have actually just added to Sharp Charts, very, very cool thing, uh, earnings dates right up here at the top of the chart. So you, mm. can, actually, uh, you can actually see that. Uh, so AristaNet, um, uh, Arista Networks uh, reported earnings on the 30th, so just a couple of days ago. Big pop after earnings. Uh, and that's coming you know, after a little bit of consolidation here. So we've seen yeah. the market sell off. We've seen AristaNet kind of consolidate, but now break higher. Uh, again, a little bit stretched. I'd be watching for a pullback. If we can get a pullback, kind of a retest of that breakout, and then a bounce off this, yeah. I think there's a lot to like there. Good volume on that, too. Uh, the RSI has been, uh, has been pretty choppy, pretty different than what we were just looking at on, uh, on Murphy. Yeah. Um, but now, uh, now back up to kind of the bullish range. So uh, I like this. I like this uh, you know, continuation of the uptrend. Uh, if you've uh, if you've got a little bit more risk to tolerate, this one might be one to one to watch. It, you know, I, I, I've always said like charts tell a story, right? And if you yeah. look at what's happened in the last like six to eight months, it, really in 2023, it's ha it's been it's been choppy, it's been volatile, it's had a number of pullbacks, mm -hmm. but then it keeps resolving higher, right? Yeah. I mean, what's interesting about this name is instead of gapping lower and then just pounding lower, which a lot of other stocks have done, right? Kind right. of the average stock in 2023 you're seeing sort of these negative downside adjustments, but then buyers are coming back in and, we, and it just keeps pushing it to the upside. I think that yeah. tells you a lot about just the, the sentiment behind the name, which certainly appears to be yeah. still constructive here, right, as it pushes right. above 200. And I mean, every time we get down below that 100-day moving average, we, yeah. uh, you know, we bounce around a little bit, we chop around, but then buyers send that thing higher. Yep. And the other thing, I love that you pointed this out too on, uh, on the first doc that we talked about. Um, you know, you're seeing a big pop after earnings, but here day two after that, you're seeing another move higher. Yeah. So again, continuation. Through. I love yep. that follow through. That's the type of thing that uh, that we like to see. And following through up to new highs, a uh, lot of lot of demand for the stock. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a good thing to think about around uh, here in the meat of earnings season. That's yeah. uh, kind. You know, you always have those gaps, but what happens right after that often uh, pretty helpful. All right. Exactly. Good. Good. Uh, and and both in technology. I don't know if this is going to be a five for five technology. It's not going to be you. five for okay. five. I'll tell All you right. that. Yeah. I'm but just we're, saying, we're starting maybe we want to spread it around yeah. a little bit. I did go. I went okay. alphabetical. I got to say. And so, you know, it seems like I got a, a technology in the A's thing going. But uh, so I we're going to switch it up. I purposely made fun of you because I'm picking a second consumer discretionary <laughs> name as my second one. So I just want to start. All that right. Off. All right. But, so I'm going with Decker's Outdoor. I will tell you, this is a this is a question mark for me. I, I, okay, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm encouraged by the gap higher that we saw uh, with earnings. I like the upside follow through. This is a stock that I was really prepared to not appreciate anymore because it had gone all the way down through the 50 day, kind of this classic breakdown after yeah. holding the 50 day through much of, you know, second half of last year, first half of this year, all of a sudden that changed. I, I think that's, you know, what I call a change of character, right? Something clearly different. And a lot of stocks kind of topped out that July, August time frame, mm -hmm. kind of following the market. But then you kind of had this upside shock. And I, what I've thought about with a lot of names around this earnings season, earnings often are that catalyst that you're waiting for, right? right a right. company that has been struggling a bit, a good earnings uh, beat can certainly propel things higher, sort of reset expectations, sure. get people interested again. Uh, it gapped higher and then traded higher. Today, as we're recording it, it's down about 2.5%. Two, uh, two, two so I think it's something to watch. Uh, and I think as long as it can hold this breakout level around 560, I think it could be a compelling one. Yeah. A lot of times with something like this, when it makes a new high, I think you, you have two general ways to approach it. Um, you're going to become overbought when you have this big gap higher, which it did. Right. So option one is you buy the breakout and you just use money, good man, money management strategies to make sure you minimize losses. So sure. what I would do is buy the breakout and then use the breakout level as an initial stop. And as long as we hold that, it's, it's following through okay and you're kind of happy with it. Option two is you wait for some sort of actionable pullback and sort of buy on the short-term weakness. And I think sure. that's one we might, if you're not here in, already in Deckers, I think you'd look for a, uh, a higher low, ideally around the 50-day moving average. If that happens, and all of a sudden it feels a little bit more like this more of, a, of, a, of an extended bullish run or the possibility for that. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with names like this because my macro hat, which I definitely have, is telling me conditions are still kind of weak, breadth conditions are still, um, you know, un, uncomfortable, if not, you know, not, not particularly bullish. But names like this that are able to break out and hold those breakouts, that's the most important thing to, uh, to look for, despite the broader market yeah. uh, condition. So I threw this in as a name of a, a breakout that's now maybe pulling back a little bit. And I think where we pull back to is always a, a, it's often a really interesting data point to pay attention to. Yeah. But I mean, again, look at what you've got on the 200-day moving average. The last two yeah. times that this thing has met its 200-day, it yep. has bounced. And yep. it's bounced yep. really nicely. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, that last one, too, is, a, is an absolutely perfect test of the 200-day. Right before the, earnings. Yeah. But, you know, no, but the, this there, chart but. is one of those that I, I don't regularly screen for stocks testing their 200-day. But after yeah. seeing this, I'm like, maybe I should be doing yeah. that. Just yeah. find these kind of names that are pulling back. And just, That's I mean, beautiful. is it worth taking a shot at something like this and seeing if it can, if it can pop higher? I, I get the argument for right. it. Right. And again, you've got something that, you know, broadly speaking, has been working for yeah. a year and a half. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a lot to like about this chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. So I think as, as long as it kind of, you know, sort of gets back to that higher high, higher low yeah. approach, I think it'd be a, a good one. So I think it's some, certainly something to watch in November to see if we can establish that higher low, establish a new foothold. Yeah. Good pick. Good pick. All right. Good your two, your number three. My number three is going to be Everest Group. Not in okay. the technology We're space. Out. Okay, good. Claps okay. Are all around. That's good, you know. <laughs> Uh, so this is a financial name. This is in reinsurance. Now, insurance sort of more broadly has uh, has been working, actually. Yeah. It's kind of been holding up. A lot of names in that space making some nice breakouts, uh, beating on earnings. A lot of interesting things happening in the insurance space. So yep. uh, Everest Group uh, kind of in that space. Uh, once again, you know, a stock that has been outperforming the market. We can see that relative strength line moving higher. And actually what I love about this, too, is that we can treat relative strength in the same way that we treat price, right? We can look for breakouts. We can look at trend. We can look at breakouts, things like that. So that relative strength line trying to uh, to actually break out uh, to new highs, uh, kind of on its way there, just a little bit below. But uh, when I see relative strength breaking out to new highs, that's kind of, uh, to yeah. me, it's, it's similar to price breaking out to new highs. It's, it's something to look for. Uh, so I love the uh, the relative strength action on this. Um, has kind of made the breakout, I would say. Mm. Uh, but what I like about this chart is that we we made that breakout uh, last month, really. Um, well, I guess I'm, I'm still thinking it's October. So we, we made that breakout in September, kind of yep. over here. We ran higher, we pulled back, we tested the 50-day, and we really kind of tested that breakout level Absolutely. too, right? Yep. If you kind of draw that price range across there horizontally, we're testing two things, key moving average, intermediate term moving average, and it's a rising 50 day too. Yep. And we're testing the breakout and we've bounced higher. Uh, so I think there's a, there's a lot to like about this chart. Uh, also RSI kind of pulled back, uh, you know, right to that 45 range. So not too bearish, kind of still within uh, you know, a reasonable pullback territory. Uh, so I, I really like what we're seeing on this thing. Again, it's backed by strength out of the uh, the group overall. We've got relative strength out of the name. Uh, earnings is behind it as well, mm. as we can see here. Uh, 1025 was when it reported October 25th. Um, so there's a there's a lot to like here. And then kind of thinking, you know, more more long term, right? Uh, here's that 200 day that's just been steadily moving higher. We've tested it a couple of times within that kind of consolidation. Yeah. So you've got a name that's been moving higher. It's consolidated. It's outperforming. It's making a breakout out of that consolidation range. I mean, there's a lot to love about EG here. Um, so that's uh, that's definitely one to watch. Along with some other names in the insurance space, I will say I actually kind of struggled to pick uh, just one. When I yeah. kind of came up with my list, there were probably four insurance stocks in there, and I had to whittle it down. Um, so lots of uh, lots of names working in that space right now. It's interesting that um, what I like about this particular chart is, uh, you know, sort of that basing pattern, uh, mm -hmm. you know, something you could draw a rectangle around. And if exactly. you look at that price action, had that nice rally in the left half of the chart. Yep. Then we sort of have this consolidation phase, you right. know, sort of consistent highs and lows. And then something changed in the last couple months, right? Obviously, yep. there's been a new influx of buyers. There's been something that is something motivated buyers to, uh, to come up. One of the chart styles, you probably don't remember this, but an early chart style you shared with me when I was really trying to ramp up on the stock charts platform yeah. was a chart style with no price and just looking at moving averages. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember you showing me that. And this is one where if you just ignore everything else and just look at the slope of the 200-day, the slope of the 50-day, you can see how well it's just kind of look at that. drifting high. You know, I mean, it, yeah. and, and it reminds me, one of the exercises I like to do is take a list of ETFs or stocks, get rid of the price, and just look at the moving averages and just... Focus on names where the moving averages are sloping higher, and yep. it usually points you to some good opportunities. Yeah. This is one that would that would come up for sure. So this is a great place to pause, actually, for a second. I got two things I want to say. One, yeah. uh, cool new feature of this new Sharp Charts Workbench. We've uh, we've built in something called the the Chart Style Library, so you can actually see all of your chart styles down here in kind of a preview format, and all you have to do is wow. click one to to load it up. Uh, but the other thing is that we've got all of these different kind of sample groups. So we've got something like popular chart styles, which brings in different uh, sort of samples that you can use just by clicking on them. So if you want that moving average focus chart that Dave and I were just talking about, where you kind of fade out the price bars and just focus on some moving averages, it's actually right there for you. You don't have to, uh, to go build that thing yourself. You can just go look for it in the, uh, in the sample group. 
Uh, the it. other thing that I want to mention, though, is that this is a great example to me of why people need to draw more horizontal lines on their charts. We mm, love drawing yeah. uptrends. We yep. love drawing those, you know, those slanted lines. Yeah. They're a little bit more subjective, though. Yep. Uh, horizontal lines are much more objective. And when you draw a horizontal line across this chart, you really start to see what you're talking about. You start to see that rectangle pattern. If yep. we annotate this with, uh, I'm using the inspect tool here, which gives me those uh, those kind of crosshairs. But you know, horizontal line up here, kind of at the top, where it's tested that level around what is it, 387 yeah. multiple times. And then you draw another horizontal line here, where it's tested that here, and then came back down to test it from the top, came back down to test it from the top. Draw more horizontal lines on your charts. It's an incredibly helpful way to see what's happening with price and catch those breakouts. I love it. I love the um, the the new workbench is actually pretty cool. And those it's little preview really charts cool at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I like it. Yeah, it's a great way to see stuff. All right, my third chart. Then we're going to switch gears to healthcare. I am going to pick another ah. sector uh, outside of consumer discretionary. Okay. Healthcare. I have I have mixed feelings about the healthcare sector. I would say I the well. sector as a as a whole uh, still very challenged, and I yeah. think. Healthcare certainly feels to me like a very diverse sector. There are, there are areas of that sector that are working. There are areas that are not. Um, I did not pick Dexcom, but you and I were talking before. DXCM is yeah. one of those just starting to turn. I think you're, you're starting to see some rotation in, in, that, in that area. Um, but the one that I picked was UNH, United Health Group. Mm -hmm. And this has been, this was a favorite name back there in like 2021. I mean, one of those really great uh, stories. And in 2022, was a really good idea, not because of the absolute price. If you look at the mm -hmm. left side of the chart, it wasn't the best chart ever that I've ever seen, but the relative strength was so strong because yes. it was just holding its ground while everything yeah. else was getting destroyed. And, and again, it was a, I, I feel like it was a masterclass on why relative strength is so important, right? A name that, a name that isn't going down when everything else is yes. often is a, lot, is a good place to, uh, to hide out there. Right. If you look what's happened more recently, United Healthcare has really been choppy. I mean, if you look at how the price action has been relatively contained over the last two years, we're kind of in this big range bound pattern, but it's really rotated higher in the last six months. And as the S&P, the NASDAQ have rotated lower, kind of starting in July, UNH kind of pulled back in July and then August and then completely reversed and started going higher. And so yeah. this showed up on my scans for new three-month highs, which yeah. I run every week. Right. Uh, and it popped up there in, uh, in late September, early October, because it was actually breaking out while a lot of other things were correcting. Right. So I like the fact that it's now made a higher low, and I think that's important. So on this name, looking forward into November, I'd want to see it hold 520 and okay. kind of keep that, keep that pattern. So I, I think a tight stop in this uh, particular situation makes a ton of sense. Similar to one of the names, I forget which one it was, maybe Arista that was testing a long-term resistance level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're kind of, you know, we've tested resistance, we've pulled back, it could be setting up for this great breakout. Right. I don't mind taking a position here and just keeping a tight stop in case it doesn't, it doesn't work out. But I, yeah. I like how it's rotated when other stocks have been struggling. The momentum is strong, but not excessive. The relative strength, once again, is pretty strong. So the sector healthcare, I think, is a tough one to justify as a as a as an allocation. Yeah. But individual names that are starting to work, I think, I think could be opportunities. And I think in some of the groups, particularly providers, I think you've seen some strength here while the average stock has been struggling. So it yeah. would be worth a shot here going into November. Yeah, it's an interesting pick. Healthcare is a challenging sector because it's, it's a, a mix one. of offensive and defensive. You and I both love yeah. to look at those offensive versus defensive Th ratios. This one's hard to classify, right? It's sort of in the other it's got, bucket. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a ratio, actually, that I like to put alongside of that um, consumer discretionary versus consumer staples. Yeah. It's, it's kind of odd. I don't see too many people doing it, but it makes sense to me. It's biotech versus the healthcare sector. Because oh, if right. you see okay. biotech start to outperform, it's kind yeah. of telling you, okay, we're in a bit more of an offensive positioning within healthcare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we're not really seeing that right now, though. Yeah. Uh, the last couple of days. <laughs> I was going to say, biotech's not at the moment. Yeah, but we've been seeing so, the defensive parts of healthcare working. That is a good that's idea, a though. That, that's kind of applying that same thinking, right? It's sort of yeah. the offensive side, the, the, the juice within healthcare to see if that's right. kind of working. That's not yeah, a bad idea. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But this healthcare providers group has some names in it that have, uh, have been looking pretty good, because that's actually yeah. my next pick. It's, oh, let's a, go there. Healthcare. Do it. So my next stock is going to be Humana. Oh, I will perfect. say, this is a different chart than what we've, uh, what we've been looking at has some similarities. I'm still drawing those horizontal lines that I love. But uh, this thing is early, and it did just report earnings. Uh, I believe it was this morning as, mm. uh, as of this recording. So beat on earnings, good, good earnings report, uh, getting hammered a little bit. 
But as wacky as this candle is, there's something to love about it in the sense that we have pulled back to that rising 50-day moving mm. average and clearly bounced off it. Now, uh, intraday, we're still moving lower. This is a crazy candle. I mean, we're up, we're down, we're sideways, we're, we're going nowhere. But still thinking broadly, again, you've got Humana starting to outperform uh, over the, the last couple of months. We've really been kind of moving sideways on this name. Uh, I will say it looked a lot better yesterday before this earnings report <laughs> when I was thinking about it. But, you know, it's a good representation of kind of the challenge that yeah. is earnings season. This is life as, um, an, as an investor, right? Yeah. But again, you know, if we can kind of settle down after the earnings report and start to uh, to pick back up, bounce off of some of those moving averages and move higher. Again, it's backed by some of the group strength. You know, we're seeing some of the other healthcare providers also look uh, look pretty good. Yeah. Um, so there's uh, there's some stuff to, to like about this one here. Uh, mostly, you know, I like that this has uh, has gone sideways while the uh, while the market has has pulled back. I yeah. like that we've actually seen some strength out of this while the market has done the opposite uh, in the last couple of months. We've seen Humana kind of buck the trend of the the total market. So yeah, um, yeah, a little bit of a different pick for me. One to watch. Uh, definitely a little bit early on the uh, on the entry here, especially after that earnings report. Uh, but still, uh, you know, one to uh, one to definitely watch, especially with the you know the group as a whole. So. You know, what's interesting about this one, it, it, it almost reminds me of the S&P chart flipped over, uh, just yeah. in terms of the downtrend channel, right? So yeah. this S&P in the last couple of months, lower highs, lower lows, right. we're kind of bouncing up off the lower end of that channel. This is kind of the opposite. It's kind of yeah. bounced down to the lower end Good of point. this uptrend channel. If you, if you, if you like the long-term story, I mean, arguably, there's no better right. opportunity than getting in, pulling back to moving average support. If you draw a trend line off those lows, that lines up pretty well to where we're at today. Yeah. Um, so if it, if it is going to hold, like, now's kind of the time. It's right. a good one to watch, for sure. And I will say, you know, part of, uh, we're not really discussing it here because we're just looking at one chart at a time, but I'll take this opportunity to say, um, I use these little style buttons over here on the left mm. to load in different time frames. That's kind of how I like to use them. I've got different charts, but I've also got different time frames. So what I like to do is bounce between the daily and the longer term weekly. I've got two longer term weekly charts in here. You can kind of see these. Here's one and here's a, the second chart, exactly the same, but a 15 year look. So if we look at Humana over the last seven and a half years, that's what this longer term weekly is. We can see that this thing is in a broader uptrend. I mean, yep. broad strokes, this thing is going higher. What's the chart doing? Don't think about it too much. It's going up into the, to the right, right? Yep. And it's outperformed the market over that time period. If we then pull this back to a 15 year chart, we can see that mm. Humana has been in a really steady uptrend for the last 15 years, outperforming the market. And if we went through all the other picks, it would kind of be the same thing. I like to find things that have you know, a short term opportunity within a broad long term mm. uptrend. Yeah. So they kind of have this characteristic of winning, characteristic of moving higher. Humana to me is that when we think about it on the uh, sort of the shorter term, yeah, we're going sideways, but if this thing is still, you know, beating earnings and uh, yeah. consolidating within that long term uptrend, there might still be some opportunity there. So mm, I like it. When in doubt, it. zoom out. That's a good when one. When in doubt, zoom I like out. It. Always. All right, my fourth pick. So we, we've now swapped sectors. I'm going to go to with an insurance name. Ah, my, okay. My, so it's, <laughs> this cracks me up how we how we how we pick these. That's I'm going funny. with Assurant A I Z. Yeah. Now this is the opposite of uh, of Humana. Uh, Assurant actually got higher today. Reported okay. earnings. It's up 11 percent as we're recording this. So. So I, at the same time, I would have loved to record this yesterday because it looked looked a real like a really good setup. But I again, <laughs> I still think names like this, the the earnings is just the latest gap higher. And I think yeah. if you look to the left on the chart, you'll see about once a quarter here in 2023, you've had these nice gaps higher. Yeah, uh, I had the same thing, uh, same situation you have when you look at the financial sector. The average stock not great. Regional yeah. banks, money center banks have been struggling. Insurance has been that, that bright spot within the sector. And yep. a lot of the names, the reinsurance names, life insurance and Progressive, many yeah. others. It's been a lot of winning. Pretty yeah. constructive charts. And it's funny because insurance is not sexy. This is mm. not like the juicy stuff that you want to talk about. It's not an emerging technology name, but it's a chart that's working. And I yeah. think what, what's great about technical analysis, it's less about what this company necessarily does why it would make sense. It's focusing on the fact that the price is going higher and that means something. That has meaning. That's what John Murphy taught yeah. both you and I uh, years ago. So I like how AIZ has been in a consistent uptrend really since March. Yeah. While a lot of stocks bottomed out, you know, sort of third, fourth quarter of last year and then kind of rallied in the first half, uh, sure it actually bottomed out a little bit later, bottomed out at the end of uh, mid-March. Yeah. From there, it's been just kind of a lights off. out uptrend. And there've been a number of times where it's had these consolidations, I think in May and June and July in particular, kind of this coil pattern, but then it resolved to the upside. It's been this nice stepwise motion of a move higher, sort of a consolidation. 
and then a move higher. So most recently, we're consolidating at an upward trending 50-day moving average. Seems like a really good uh, setup. So I'm not surprised we've had just another, another move higher. You know, do you buy it on a day like today? I probably wouldn't. I'd probably wait and wait for some sort of pullback, which I think makes sense when you've had a big gap higher. But what's great about this particular chart in this space is you've had good pullbacks on the way up. And so I yeah. think November is the time when you probably digest this gap, you rotate a little bit lower, you put in a higher low, that would be the signal I'd be looking for. So yeah. this, I think this is a good opportunity to use something like RSI when you get down to an RSI around 40, 50. Yeah. If this trend is going to keep working, that's kind of where those pullbacks happen. And so I would be looking for uh, a pullback to a, a reasonable amount of momentum, and that would be the time to layer into a name like this. But for me, this represents the insurance space, which I think if you're yeah. if you're picking charts going through the now and year end, I think you have to be thinking about insurance. Just been yeah, a strong that's one place. Of the, one of the groups. Yep. You know what I love about this chart? I like to find stuff like this that lets me, I would call it structure a trade. So mm, the way yeah. I like to go into a trade, as, as many do, is, uh, is sort of pyramiding in. I call it pyramiding in yep. or laddering in, however you want to talk about it. So you yeah. don't go in with 100%. You go in with a smaller chunk of the total position that you eventually want to take. Sure. And you add to it if the market proves you right. Yeah. This type of chart I find beautiful because it lets you structure that trade. Yep. You've got sort of this first tier breakout around the, the 155 level. And if you draw that horizontal line across there, you're actually, you're not just testing kind of the, you know, the last year, you're actually going back all the way to the mm. left side of this chart yeah, too, right. to where we kind of found support. Yeah. Um, so you've got that kind of first tier breakout that you're trading against. It's made that, uh, that new high. That's your first entry on a position like this. Mm, but yep. then if the market continues to, uh, to send this thing higher, You've got a second entry up at the uh, sort of the ultimate breakout up yep. there at what is that 185? Oh, 185 that range, yeah, yeah 187. Uh, so this lets you kind of structure that mm. trade. I actually like to find things like this that are that are making one breakout below another breakout, and you can kind of trade both of them if the market mm. does send the thing higher. Um, I, I really like this chart, and backed by the group strength that we're talking about. Yes, yeah. that's good. There, I think I think with either of these insurance names we picked, you could swap in a number of other tickers, yeah. and you could probably make the case. You really for them, could. To be it's honest. almost unfair to put insurance in financials. Who, yeah. Who's lumping insurance <laughs> with banks? I mean, come on. Well, no, right? but it, it does yeah. speak though. I mean, we talk a lot about sectors, right? And it, yeah. it speaks to the importance of also going to the next layer down and looking yes. at those industry groups. And I think a lot of people kind of stop with healthcare, financials, technology, yeah. you gotta go consumer deeper. discretionary. There's a lot of diversity, yeah. kind of that next level down. And yeah. and again, I what I love about stock charts is being able to kind of dig deeper and then yeah. use the scanning engine, use the industry summary, different ways yeah. to sort of yeah. make sense of those groups underneath it. Right. Yeah. I like Absolutely. it. All right, your final pick. Where are we going? Uh, we're going with the utilities name. No, I'm just kidding. We're going, we're going back to technology. <laughs> I almost walked off the set right there. Okay, okay. it's not five right. for five on technology okay, here, but it right. is three, three for five. Three five. I, right, there's some fair. setups. I mean, there, it's been a group that's, uh, that's okay. been working this year. There's some setups out there. Okay. So here is my fifth and final pick. It's going to be Synopsys, S-N-P-S. Okay. Mm. Again, consolidating within a longer term uptrend, providing a really nice entry here holding above key moving averages, outperforming the market. There's, there's just a ton to like on this. I love the scooter sitting up there at 91.1. Uh, mm. uh, not too high, it's not sitting at a 99, but it's really, really strong. I mean, this thing is outperforming 90% of its peers. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, is clearly outperforming the market. I mean, look at that strength over the last year and a half, outperformed VTI by almost 63%. Uh, love the uptrend, love that it made this breakout back here, kind of in, uh, in May. Uh, ran higher and then consolidated. And we're really sort of just now breaking out of that consolidation range. We tried, we made an attempt, we came back, we tested some of that, uh, some of those price ranges, some of those price levels, and we've now bounced higher. Again, we're above key moving averages. I love to see that. I will say volume's not super, super important for me, but I would yeah. love to see the volume a little bit higher on this, mm, uh, sure. on this move up. Yep. Um, but uh, I do love to see the RSI getting back above, uh, above 50 there. Um, and I just, you know, I like this consolidation range. Again, I'm drawing those horizontal lines, and if I see it start to take out those levels and hold some of those other levels, uh, I, you know, I really like what I'm seeing here. Uh, we can draw that kind of shorter term uptrend too. Uh, really, the uh, the 50, eh, the sort of somewhere between the 50 and the 100 day has been kind of drawing it for us. If you look at that orange line, I mean, there's kind of the rate of trend over the last couple of months yep. since that breakout in May. Uh, this thing is, uh, has been moving higher, and I, I think it's got uh, room to work up above, uh, above where it's at right now. So uh, lots of like here for me in, in synopsis.
Yeah, that, that one, the RSI at the bottom is, is what I think is really just a, it's kind of a, th that classic bullish phase where the yeah. whole RSI kind of drifts higher, the right. pullbacks, the RSI is around 40. Right. It's just kind of this nice, slow and steady uptrend. Yep. And it's, it's, it's impressive that a name like this exists in the market environment we have yes, right now. Like this exactly. is not the type of chart I would find readily available, but exactly. here it is in technology. In technology, right. you know, finding a, catching a bid here while the market's yeah. been weak, there's, there's a lot to like there. Sideways in an environment like this is about the most beautiful thing you can find. It, it's, Something's it's, going sideways and the market's selling off. Totally. That tells you a lot. That's a great point. All right, my last pick. I'm going, yeah. I'm going with an ETF here, which, ah. I, and, and I apologize for that, but I'm going GDX. I don't, okay. I don't know if I have great conviction on an individual gold stock here. I probably could, but so I'm going a little off script, but I thought it would be good because, and, and I didn't really think of how this would be the last chart we showed <laughs> out of the 10, but it's definitely different than the rest. And I yeah. think for me, gold is the story here. The GLD has had an impressive run. Yes, or, you know, has. maybe a short covering rally in a lot of ways in October, Sure, but it's really gone up. Gold, you know, spot gold testing all time highs around $2,100 an ounce. That means something. And yeah. I think a position like the GDX is basically cushioning yourself, finding a potential safe haven if things start to get rockier. And I yeah. think there's a non-zero chance that November into December is more like 2018, which was kind of a, yeah. you know, we made a new low in mid-December as opposed to the normal calendar, which is November, December, our lights out up. Yeah. Given everything going on, given the escalation in the Middle East, uh, the Fed and, and uncertainty there, I think there's a risk. And so diversifying okay. into areas like gold that look a little different, I, I would call yeah. this like a technical um, uh, 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 dispersion, right? You want to yeah. get into some things that look a little different. Yeah. So gold, I think, looks a lot better than, than gold stocks for now. But I think if the GDX, if the gold miners catch up to the strength in gold, I yeah. think there's a great opportunity of kind of a mismatch right now. Right. And if that's where things go, these could swing higher. I think from a tactical perspective, this violates most of what we've just said, which is it's below moving averages. It's not making higher highs. The RSI is more in the bearish range, but that's why I think now is the time to watch it. Yeah. I have an alert on stock charts set for when the GDX gets above 30. That would take us above this resistance. Depending on how things play out, that could be like an inverted head and shoulders yeah. bottom. But in some way, this is a clear resistance level around 30. Getting a little bit above 30 would also take us above the 200-day moving average. The RSI gets above 60. I think this could be rotating in that position of strength. So it's less than I'm seeing on the evidence on the chart now, but more given the strength in gold, I think there could be an opportunity for gold stocks to sort of recognize that strength and yep. move higher. And, and if so, it could diverge from the rest of the equity space. So I think this is more of a, a play on equities as a whole getting worse. Gold stocks actually you know, often do, do well in that environment as sort of a safe haven place. I, yeah. I, I think it's a little early, but I think looking at that GDX level at 30, and again, I would set an alert for that. I think that's a really good opportunity maybe to ride the next, uh, you know, a, a new rotation higher in a group that's been struggling a bit. Yeah. I like to buy strength. And so, you know, waiting for this thing to get above, uh, above 30 in a minimum yeah. makes, makes a lot of sense to yep. me. But again, just like you said earlier, charts tell a story. What's yeah. the story on this thing? The story is that they don't really want it below 26. Yeah. This thing is yeah. struggling yeah. to go below 26. Yep. You know, look back all the way to, uh, to what is that, kind of August of 2022. Yeah. We ran up to 26 from below yep. and got smacked back down. As soon yep. as we did eventually get above that, though, in the end of 2022, every time we've come back down, yeah, yeah, yeah there you got sort it. This every here, time yeah. you've come back down to that range, mm. buyers step in and send the thing higher. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's another thing to look for. If you want to be a little bit more risky on some of these ranges and kind of catch the bottom of it instead of the top, yep. I mean, there's clear support for this thing around that kind of 26 27 range. That's the yeah. story on this. Yep. Uh, if it can, uh, you know, bounce up and, and uh, take out some of those 30 levels, you know, again, you've got a, a nice structured trade here, making yeah. those breakouts on the way up. I, I like the pick. I like the pick. And the strength <laughs> out of gold has been crazy in the. I last. was going to say so, and I and I Man. do own. I mean, full disclosure, I own gold in 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 some accounts, and sure. I think you know, for me, part of that is just diversifying away from equities yeah. in general. But right. particularly now, when things start to get uncomfortable, I'm not sold on bonds being a great place to be, given the interest rate yeah. environment. Something like gold, you know, usually is 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 a little less correlated to stocks. I, now's that time when that feels like a really good yeah. place for part of your portfolio to kind of be. Yeah, so I think it makes sense. Huh. Okay. Um, this was awesome. This was, this was fun. fun. We'll do it again, maybe in a month or so. I would I'd say love we'll, to. Well, a lot will happen probably between now and uh, and late November, early December. We'll try okay. to do this again.
Grayson, this was awesome. Thanks for joining me today. Yeah. I appreciate it. I love doing this because just like you're always saying, we, we mentioned it earlier, it's always a good time to own good charts. So there's always something out there. You know, no matter what the market <laughs> environment is, there's always something to watch out there, whether it's you know, on the long side, on the short side, whatever it is, there's always stocks to watch. So no, I love doing this. It's, I think the it's truth. great every month. All right, everyone. I'm Dave Keller with StockCharts.com. Thanks again for joining us here on the special episode of The Final Bar. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to the video and the channel. By the way, also check out our other channel called Stock Charts, some fantastic documentary style content. Also some great background information on the Stock Charts platform. Be well, stay safe. We'll see you again soon.